everybody, my name is Brian, you are watching Angling Anarchy, and on today's video, we are going to talk about GoPros, how I power them, and some of the different options I use to power them. We'll go everything from batteries to uh, external power, um, and how all of that works. This really helps when you're fishing especially, because one of the biggest questions I see people asking on Facebook or you know social media when they get a new GoPro or action camera is okay so how do I power these things because uh, the battery life is is pretty dismal it's only it's maybe an hour and a half two hours at best so I've come up with a couple different ways to power multiple cameras all day and it really makes the filming process a lot easier so that you're not constantly switching out batteries. So, first thing we'll talk about though is the batteries and when's a good time to use those. All right, first off, batteries. And by the way, I am wearing my chesty. Um, sometimes it helps to show things right here instead of holding it up to the camera, but we may do both of those. We'll see. It's just nice to have it there. Plus, if that audio takes crap, I can use this audio. That's the other nice thing about wearing a chesty, but that's a completely uh, different subject, chesty versus head cam versus whatever else. But onto the batteries. All right, so I have multiple different styles of GoPros um, Hero 3s, Hero 4s, Hero 7. Um, there's obviously 5s, 6s, there's an 8 now. So there's all sorts of different GoPros that guys are using, I'm sure. Um, so I have batteries for the, uh, let's see, these are the 4 batteries, these are 3 batteries. Uh, I've got a bunch of them. I really don't use them a ton. Um, every now and again, maybe if I do a, uh, a time lapse or something like that, something that I, I know is not going to take more than the hour and a half battery life that you get, sometimes I'll, I'll use a battery. And actually, let's see, where is it? I do have a Hero 7 that I kind of carry around the boat and I use for B-roll slow-mo footage. Uh, I, I have a battery in that, so there's not a cord connected to it. Uh, that makes it a little bit easier, but those are really the only times I'll actually use the factory batteries to power my GoPros just because every other thing that that I do it is more essential to have those cameras running continuously and I don't want to be changing out batteries. So that's it for batteries. Let's move on to the cool stuff where you can power these things all day long. When I first started filming my musky fishing, I, I had wore a head cam for a little bit. I didn't care for it, but you can get some cool shots. It's not fun to watch an entire video of somebody whirling their head around, but you do get some cool shots with a head cam. So this is going to go same for a chest cam, how we're going to power these things. You can buy for the Hero 3s and 4s a cable. It's a 10 foot cable that plugs into the back of the battery. It's this one right here. Uh, it's made by Switronics. That... Oh, it's not in focus. That's what plugs into the back of the camera. It terminates in a USB thing. What is that called? It just terminates in a USB plug-in. Um, so this is what I power all my Hero 3s and 4s with. My chest cam is a Hero 4. I've got... See, it plugs in back there, run the cable down behind your shirt, and in my pocket right here, I have my power source. And that's what we'll talk about next. So the Hero 3s and 4s, you can buy these special cables so that the battery doesn't have to be in the GoPro. That's the important thing. You can run a GoPro, the 3 and the 4, by plugging in uh, the charging cable on the side here. It's a USB mini input. Problem is, is sometimes having the battery in there, what it's doing is it's recharging while it's trying to work. So what happens is the, the, the GoPro will overheat at times. These battery eliminator Switronics cables uh, eliminate the battery. So you don't have that overheating problem. Um, and everything I talk about, guys, check it out in the description below. I've got Amazon links for every single one of these things so you'll be able to just click right through and get right to these things. So, onto the power source. 
I thought early on, wouldn't it be cool if I could use the batteries that people use to charge their cell phones with? Because they've always got USB ports right here. Um, so I started out with an Anker, A-N-K-E-R, 10,000 milliamp cell phone battery charger and plugged the GoPro into it, ran it perfectly. I thought, all right, we're onto something. So ever since then, the, these are the little uh, power packs I've been using. These are the Anker 13,000 milliamp hour ones. Um, but yeah, that way you can, for your Hero 3s and 4s, you can plug that Switronics cable in, power your GoPros. The 5s, 6s, 7s, and 8s, I believe. I know for the 7 for sure, but I'm pretty sure the 5s and ups. You don't have to have these battery eliminator cables because the side port on those is a USB-C input, not a USB mini. That USB-C input will allow you to power the GoPro from one of these or any, any sort of USB power source and it will allow you to run your GoPro without the battery in there. So again, we don't have the problem of your GoPro overheating. Uh, so USB cords running your GoPros is how I run everything in the boat and you probably can't see them because the angle's not wide enough but over here in the boat and over here in the boat I have cigarette lighter adapters with dual port USB um, plug-ins so my cameras on the gunnel and the cameras that, you, uh, that I use on the, the tower or the pole over here uh, I get continuous power from those through either the Switronics cord for the Hero 3s and 4s or the five, the Hero 5s and ups, you can use that. Uh, you know, just get a, go on Amazon and order a six or a 10 foot USB-C cord that you would, you know, charge your cell phone up and it'll plug right into the side of the GoPro. And that is how you can power these things all day long without ever having to worry about them shutting off on you or having to change the battery. Before we move on, there is one product that I don't use personally, uh, just because when I started filming, they weren't commercially available. Everything in my boat that I film with, I basically built myself or sort of cobbled together myself. But there is one thing that I know a lot of guys use, and it is quite handy. It's called a Yolo Tech stick. Um, it plugs in in your in the light sockets for the boat. So it's cool because that's where it gets your power from. But as I said, I get power from the boat off the battery as well with the USB. So that's not a problem. I mean, it's, it's a cool way though because it's a pre-constructed stick that the camera sits on top of that you can just plug right in. Um, so that is a nice option for guys. The only reason I don't think I would like it, and I haven't tried it, this is just speculation on my part, but when I've got my stuff set up on a, on a taller pole, I've got two points of contact where that is being held in the boat. The Yolo Tech stick is just plugged in. So you've got this camera on top of a stick that has one point of contact and I just I don't know how sturdy that is. Obviously it works well, they sell a lot of them, um, but when I'm on Eagle Lake and I'm running three foot waves, I can leave all my cameras up. Uh, maybe just put a bag over them to cover them up, but I can leave them up. I know they're not going to tilt or anything. The Yolo Tech sticks, I don't know how sturdy they are, so uh, it is an option. Look into them. Um, I think they're they're $100, dollars um, I'm not exactly sure. Do a little research on them, but that's another option that you can use to power your GoPros continuously. Now that we've covered how I power the cameras and the the cables and the cords that you need for for certain models, and again, I'll have all the stuff uh, for you guys to look at in the, the description as far as where to get this stuff from and uh, pretty much everything I buy for for filming uh, you can get off Amazon so that's a really good resource and I'll have those links down below one other way I've really found is a good way to power these things and you know a lot of you guys out there might have sitting around if you have power tools any of the Milwaukee DeWalt Makita if you go online you can find these little guys that clip onto the top of the battery. And what you've got back here, I don't know if it'll show it here, you might be able to see it a little better here, but you have a USB input on these things and now this is your power pack. Um, so you just slide it in, boom, the cable plugs in right here. Uh, so I've got Milwaukee stuff, you can use the M18 batteries. Um, I found these 5.0s, 
I ran a camera all day long when we, we did our trip down to uh, Pennsylvania and I was fishing out of somebody else's boat and I knew I would need possibly some more power sources than what I had with the little Anker chargers. I grabbed this uh, and then I can, you know, grab a couple of them. You can switch them out, but this guy lasted me all day long. Um, the 12 volt batteries that Milwaukee has, same thing. They've got these little handy dandy deals that have the, uh, they've also got the USB port on the side here. So that would be, you know, that might be a good one to, if you have one on your person, a chesty head cam, slide it in your pocket. It's a little bit lower profile than these big ones. Um, but yeah, that's, that's another way to power your cameras. Um, yeah, I, I th that, that's the biggest thing, guys, is if you're going to start filming, especially if you're going to be running multiple cameras, you've got to figure out a way um, to power them with these cords uh, and get rid of the batteries. The, the other big disadvantage, I mean, just being a pain in the butt, having to have a bunch of batteries and switching them out and having the, potentially having the camera die on you right in the middle of fighting the fish. I mean, that, that'd be the worst thing. Um, the other thing is, is a lot of the cameras I have, I can set them in a position, run them all day, and other than stopping and starting them to save footage, that's all I have to do. If you're changing batteries out, you're constantly changing the angles, you're going to have to make sure they're, even, even this one, um, I can just leave it. You don't have to tip it down to change batteries or take, take the GoPro out of the case. It just runs all day. This is the best way uh, to do this. Let's get into one more thing, kind of a little bonus thing. I think we've covered powering. If we haven't, uh, leave me a comment and you know ask me whatever question you might have uh, about powering these things. But I think those I hit the big highlights that I wanted to cover. Um, I talked about filming all day and how important power is. Well, the other the other question I would see a lot, other than you know what do I need for batteries for a GoPro, is what size SD card do I need? Because I'm just gonna film all day and, and fill the card up. There's a way to get around that and it is the looping function. So let's really quick talk about that. All right, so you may have seen looping as, as a function on, on these GoPro cameras and a lot of people just don't realize what it is. It is, other than being able to power your cameras all day, it is the best way to film, I feel, um, because you are saving small chunks over long periods of time where let's face it musky fishing or any type of fishing you can go through a lull where nothing happens so what filming does or what looping does while you're filming <clears throat> and i use the five minute loop so for example what this gopro is doing as soon as i start it it starts filming it'll save a minute worth of footage and it'll make that its own little file and then it starts filming the second minute so on and so forth. Once it gets done filming the sixth minute, it starts filming the seventh minute and it gets rid of the first minute. And then as soon as it gets done filming that minute worth, it goes on to the next one. So you're constantly moving your footage down the road. So when you hit stop, the camera saves from that point when you hit stop back five minutes. It's actually five plus. Um, it's going to end up being five full minutes plus whatever that last little piece was before it gets to a minute and it throws out the last one and starts filming a new one. So I guess what I'm saying is when you when you are looping in the five minute uh, function on GoPro and there's, there's different uh, amounts you can pick. Five, twenty, sixty, and max. I think I know those are some of the the ones, but I, I really find the five works nice because the amount of times I've hooked a fish and dealt with that fish and then got it back in the water, it's I almost always have the first two minutes uh, is is just dead footage. So unless something happens where where you think you're going to run into a problem, maybe the fish ate the bait so bad that you've got to work on it, do a little surgery on it, then you just stop the cameras. It saves everything. You can restart them, finish with the fish, and then stop them again, and, and you'll you'll have everything. Uh, the twenty minute function would cover that for you, but that's just you're saving four times as much space as opposed to the five. I enjoy the five. I know guys like the twenty, um, but yeah. So I hope that makes sense. 
it saves it in one minute chunks, which is nice for editing because that first two minutes where nothing happens, I can just get rid of that. So uh, that's not taking up room. I'm, I just want to save the action. I don't want to have a bunch of other junk filling up uh, my SD card. So when I was saying it, it films in the one minute chunks and that last little chunk when you hit stop, it's going to be anywhere from one second to 59 seconds. So even though it's a five minute loop, you're going to have five minutes and somewhere between one and 59 seconds on that last one. Um, gosh, I hope that, I really hope that makes sense. Um, but, but the two biggest things you need to know to make your filming more efficient are powering your cameras continuously and that looping function. So we've covered that here. Again, if you have any comments uh, or questions, uh, put those in the comments below, obviously. Everything I talked about and all of my filming gear um, is in the uh, description below with links that you can find them. And I think that is everything I wanted to cover. I really want to get back out on the water here. Uh, we are literally in the midst of a global pandemic, <laughs> which is so surreal to say. Um, in Wisconsin, luckily, we can still get out and go fishing. Uh, so that's that's nice. Um, but yeah, uh, it's crazy times, people, and hope everybody out there is staying safe. And, uh, you know, if I have to film a couple things in the garage here while we're waiting this dumb thing out, that's what we'll do. So if you have any other questions that you might have that you'd like me to attempt to answer, go ahead and put those in the comments as well. And uh, that's it. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really do appreciate each and every single one of you. Uh, I'm just flabbergasted that people watch this channel. It's really cool. We will see you on the next video.